Hello, welcome back. Once we narrow down the possible diagnosis based on the visual inspection of the colony characteristics on culture media, we then move on to the microscopic identification of bacteria. First step is to prepare the material for microscopy that is obtained from a single colony on the media. We can use various methods depending on whether we want to observe the bacteria live or in preserved state. Bacteria are killed in the process of preservation. Various types of microscopes have been discussed by me in my earlier video and can vary from bright field, dark ground, phase contrast, fluorescent and so on. We use short term mounts to observe the live bacteria in the natural state. These include wet mounts and hanging drop preparations. For the details of hanging drop preparation, please see my earlier video. For the short term mounts, we have to prepare a liquid culture of the isolated bacteria. This is done by picking a part of a single bacterial colony and transferring it into the peptone water in a test tube. After mixing it well in the tube, it is kept in an incubator for 2 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. This allows the bacterium to grow and develop its motility. We put a drop of this liquid culture on a slide, cover it with a cover slip and then observe it under the light microscope. Motile bacteria can be seen actively moving from one place to the other. Non-motile bacteria also show vibrating motion at the place because of the Brownian forces and this should not be reported as motility. Wet mount is easy to prepare but the cover slip can damage the larger cells, slide can dry up quickly and there is also a risk of contamination of the equipment as well as the observer. The hanging drop preparation is better in these aspects. The short term mounts give us a true assessment of the size, shape and motility of the bacteria. For long term study of the bacteria, we need to make permanent mounts using the smear technique that was developed by Robert Koch more than 100 years ago. We begin by spreading a thin film made from a liquid culture or directly from a bacterial colony on a slide and allow it to dry. The next step is fixation where the air dried smear is heated gently on a flame. The heat fixation simultaneously kills the bacteria and fixes them to the slide. It also preserves various cellular components in a natural state with minimal distortion. We can also use alcohol and formalin as fixating agents in place of heat. Unstained bacteria on a fixed smear look all alike, so we use various staining techniques to create contrast and give color to differentiate the bacterial species from each other. Dyes impart color to the bacterial cell or its parts by becoming affixed to them through a chemical reaction. The dyes are classified as basic or acidic, having a positive or a negative charge respectively. Bacterial cell has a lot of negatively charged acidic substances and thus stains readily with basic dyes. Acidic dyes, on the other hand, are repelled by the bacteria, so they are used mainly for negative staining. Most staining techniques use a positive stain that actually sticks to the bacteria and gives it color. A negative stain on the other hand does not stick to the specimen but settles around its outer boundary. Nigro skin that has a blue-black color and India ink that has a black suspension of carbon particles are the dyes most commonly used for negative staining. Negative staining is also used to visualize the capsule that is a protective layer surrounding some bacteria. Common capsule forming bacteria include Streptococcus pneumoniae, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Bacillus anthracis, Yersinia pestis, and Meningococcus. The positive staining methods are further classified as simple, differential, and special. The simple stains use a single dye and have a simple procedure. They take advantage of the ready binding of the bacterial cells to the dyes. Example of simple stains are malachite green, crystal violet, basic fuchsin and saffron. Simple stains cause all cells in the smear to appear more or less the same color regardless of the type. But they can still reveal bacterial characteristics such as shape, size and arrangement of bacteria. 
the differential stains use two different colored dyes called the primary dye and the counter stain to create a clear contrast between different cell types or cell parts. They are more complex and may require additional chemical reagents to produce the desired reaction. Differential stains use common combinations like red and purple, red and green or pink and blue. Just like the simple stains, differential stains also show the size, shape and arrangement of cells. Examples include gram stain and acid fast stain. Gram staining is a century old method named after its developer Hans Christian Gram. It remains the most universal differential stain for bacterial identification. Gram stain permits ready differentiation of the bacteria into gram positive bacteria that stains purple and gram negative bacteria that stains pink or red. The acid fast stain is another important diagnostic stain that differentiates pink colored acid fast bacteria from non acid fast bacteria that are blue in color. This stain originated as a specific method to detect mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria having an impermeable outer wall that holds fast or tightly to the carbyl fuchsin dye even when washed with an acid. That is why it is called acid fast stain. Other bacteria that are acid fast include Mycobacterium leprae and Nocardia species. Special stains are used to visualize special cell parts that are not revealed by the stains discussed earlier. The endospore staining uses a dye that is forced by heat into the dye resistant spores or endospores. This stain is used to distinguish between spores and the vegetative bacterial cells. Flagellar staining is a method of revealing the flagella that are tiny, slender filaments used by the bacteria for locomotion. Because the width of the bacterial flagella lies beyond the resolving power of the light microscope, in order to be seen, they must be enlarged by depositing a coating on the outside of the flagella and then staining it. Granule staining is also a special stain that helps us visualize granules. For example, volatine granules produced by Corynebacterium diphtheria can be demonstrated by Albert stain. So this was all about the basic microscopic identification techniques that help us differentiate the pathogenic bacteria and narrow down further on the possible diagnosis. Till now, we have covered the macroscopic identification on blood and McConkie agar plates followed by microscopic identification using short-term mounts and long-term mounts and various staining methods used to visualize and differentiate the pathogenic bacteria. Hope you liked the video. Do comment, like, subscribe and share for more such videos. Thank you for watching.